got fuel in the 720 and that battery wasn't quite good enough to start the thing so I just used two cells out of this battery <laughs> and held this in the cab whilst the other end was hooked into the battery leads and uh, yeah consequently that, that end there actually got quite hot but anyway it almost burnt a finger but I got it running so now I can move this thing out of here because I broke the exhaust on the nav so that's coming in here for surgery that was dead flat idle you've seen before and she hasn't been started in a long while we're going to low range anyway and we'll back the old girl out have we got a clutch? we've got a clutch wonderful the um, slave sometimes leaks on this one so yeah it's only done it once and it must have pushed whatever crap was in there out so yeah, all my chainsaws are going to be in the sun, but that's okay. We'll get a, we'll get over that. Only for a little while. I did uh, knock off two hours early because the exhaust broke on the unit on the way to work. It's been noisy for a little, a little while, like it's been hissing, and it's been starting to blow out. Well, I hit the train line in Balaclava. Or might have been bumped just before that. And uh, in a nutshell, it went from, you know, to bah, it went crack, with a bit of a rattle, and then, it, yeah, straight into the bar. All right, handbrake on. I, I chucked 20 litres in here, and that gauge hasn't moved, so. Whether it's just a bit funny from being empty for so long. And yeah, this old girl should get rego soon anyway. I at least want to take it out in the farm and try it out. Because I rebuilt the diff in this one. This is the L18. A87 head. Put a new radio in here too. And it's Bluetooth and everything. It's more... It's got more goods in it than the bloody Navara. Because that one's not Bluetooth or anything. So you can't make phone calls whilst you're driving. Whereas this you can. Still cold. Very cold. But we'll leave it run for a little while, let it warm up. It does smooth out once it's warm. So, yeah. I know I'm almost certain this manifold's got a crack in it somewhere. But I don't think it's the gasket. And they're hard to weld up, so I might put a set of extractors or something on it one day. Maybe a single 45 Weber, which I think I've got a single 40 mil Weber here. Side draft. Oh, yeah, that's blocked off. That's right, that doesn't do anything anymore. Oh, yeah, you push on that. Smokes a bit. Probably could do with a set of plugs. I did look at the points, but never actually cleaned them. So even if just doing that, that carby might be a bit dodgy too. That low speed jet might have had something in it. And I'm not sure whether it'll start again, but you know, like the hydrometer on this battery, this battery was second hand from somewhere else. That seems to be all good. And I've got my nice heavy charge wire here and it certainly is charging. I've got a new clamp meter too, I should try that out on here. Might do that quickly. And then I'm going to bring the nav in and get that fixed. I thought we'd go under and have a look where it cracked out. Oh, worse than I expected. I thought the front was an issue. Those gases are fucked. Yeah, I thought the front was an issue. Um, well, I mean, it is, clearly, but 
I thought it actually broke the the front out where it's welded to. So I've done the back up before, but that's actually snapped it clean off. So that's fucking unreal. So once the gas is clear out of there, I'll I'll fix her up. I naturally thought that the front side was leaking. What I was saying before, that's my welding last time doing the backside here. Years and years of vibrations. And then I've done the front side on this muffler and here there's a leak. Oh pardon me, it's a leak here still. But this whole box was opened up like a baked bean can. Back when I had points, that's even cracked there again. It's cracked right next to where I welded, which is normal because there's no support in this box. It's actually broken in the middle. So I had points, being this is a pointed vehicle normally. And uh, before before the days where I converted it to uh, electronic distributor, distributor. Anyhow, went through some water. It actually happened a couple times. Um, and I obviously flooded the distributor because I could flick water out of it. But when it fired back up, it just went bang and split the rear one. And then, um, oh, I mean, this is a genuine muffler too for this vehicle. So, you know, like, it's still got Nissan on it. And Calsonic, this is, this is genuine to this vehicle from 1991. So, yeah. And this back section was genuine too. I'm pretty sure there's Nissan written on the top of it. Oh no, this has got a Walker back section on it. So this back section may have been replaced before. So, yeah, because Walker's Australian, I believe. Don't take me for granted on that. I haven't Googled it, but anyway. A couple of old dents in the field tank. I don't, don't remember being there. Anyway, I do have a new guard to put on the front here too. Mounts to these two bolts. And it's just a bit of a brush guard. But anyway. Oh, earth strap there's broken too. Wonder when that broke. Not that it really matters, it's got countless other earth straps that are still good. Well, we might as well just have a quick look while we're under here. That uni's fine. This uni feels fine, I believe. It looks fine anyway. I've been waiting for this bloody centre bearing to fail. I've got two spares. I've bought two new ones. Front uni is hard to, hard to check with one hand. But no, I think that one's alright too. You hardly ever do a front one because they are straight. Gearbox there's leaking oil. But that's nothing unusual for a wet gearbox back there. That's the easiest point. Even though it's got this breather here. So where all the shit gathers in the extension housing and comes out the top of the boot there and runs down over itself. Especially if they're a bit over full, which I believe this one is just a fraction over full, or was. When they do that, they soon find their own level. Anyhow. Uh, yeah, so that's just not... I mean, yeah, I have welded the front here too before. There's a crack around there. I may only welded part of it. So I'll go try and get this fucking clean and do this. I've got the dog grinder ready with a wire brush on it. You've got to get all the aluminium off. Here's my leaky rear main seal. It's just starting to weep and blow itself around. Every now and again you see it drip out of here. But, you know, 470,000, it doesn't really surprise me. It's never been changed. I never thought to change it when I had the gearbox off last time. You know, this front harmonic balancer seal's probably on its way out too. No, that I got a leak from the distributor. The O-ring on that's gone hard. Even though that is a fucking new O-ring, would you figure? I bet you if I had left the old car on there, it wouldn't leak. But everything else looks all right. Engine mounts look all right. Gearbox mount looks fine. I haven't ripped that out yet. Maybe next year I will. If I get this other engine I want to build built, and that gets to 
277 kilowatts, we'll see. That starter motor up there, I went through a phase of putting fucking starter motors in this thing. That's out of my bloody Series 2 Bluebird. And only just fits in there. You've got to perform a bit of gymnastics to get the bloody thing in. And same with the bolts for one of them there. It came out of the Series 2 Bluebird wagon I bought when I was 17. And I haven't replaced it since. Like, I put a brand new one off of eBay in there. And the Bendix gave me issues after about 12 months. So I thought rather than put another brand new one in, only waste m my money, I'll put that second hand one in and it's been happy ever since. Every now and again it does miss the, the wheel, but I think quite often it just doesn't quite line up. And they start in the same spot too, so the, uh, it says a bit of oil over that oil pump, but that's all from floating around from the front or maybe even from filter changes because you do run a bit down here and I usually get under here and clean it but sometimes you just don't get it all um yeah sometimes the teeth just don't line up and you do start them in the same spot they sort of stop in the same spot so sometimes it's handy if you turn the wheel like the flywheel 180 degrees because they wear the teeth on that one section it really wants new front brake calipers as well. The slides are actually worn out on it. There's quite a bit of movement in the slides. They're fucked. I've got another second hand set that's way better. Off of a vehicle that's from 1988. This one's the worst one. But like, yeah. I get a lot, because of those slides being worn, I get a lot of brake knockoff. So yeah, so basically they float around and they rattle around, especially on the dirt roads, and they actually pushes the like actually pushes the pistons back in, which you normally get in a floating road assembly like on a V8 supercar or something. Backs are renowned for doing it because the tension is never keep up. So your first press quite often is trying to just get the shoes to meet the meet the drum, and then the second press you've got all your brakes back, which is common. Um, and you know I've had people go you sure it's not just the back brakes I'm like it's all four trust me you drive the thing you drive it like I do down the dirt roads where you don't use the brakes for an extended period of time and you come to the next corner and you've got brakes but you've got travel in the pedal and it's not the back you know you can feel the back go up and then because the back will the back will um, knock off before the next corner, so you can feel them, and that's pretty normal. But you, you can feel when the front does it, like you can feel, and you can feel them pull up because if you go for a press, you can, and you can feel if you can feel the car, if, if you can feel the car like it's your own piece of your own legs, you know, you can feel one wheel before the other, and um, it's usually the wheel for the, this wheel here first, then you'll feel this one start the brake. And then you've got even braking after you go for your second press or, you know, or you start that push harder. Anyway, so I'll, I'll do that at the end of the year. It wouldn't hurt. It has, has had a fluid change, but it would be nice to even put some new drums on the back as well because they were close to maximum tolerance. I'm really dreading doing this. But, all right, let's do it. I'll finish my coke off. And then I'll wire wheel this and... Get all prickly. Obviously, it's got some pull on it backwards there. So I might have to just. I've got a ratchet strap here on. Probably when I come to weld it, I'll push it um, one way. Pull it one way. <clears throat> I might just undo this as well and just see where that manifold wants to sit. Not that that clamp's really that tight. And that's rubber mounted up here under the gearbox, so. It's actually in one piece. Normally they break off here too. And the rubber gives out. And then this breaks off and that's when you start having exhaust problems. Nothing nothing better than a decent link from manifold through the headers 
back to the box somewhere. Even if you make one yourself, it goes across to these spare bolts here. You know, like, just takes all the movement out. Whether it be a standard exhaust system like this or a bloody dump pipe. Look how rusty this is. Probably getting thin. I do have this front section, but it's in the same scenario as this, like, it's all flogged out from being on dirt roads. I think I've got it back to here, but I don't really have the time for that. And if you start bloody undoing flange bolts and one of them snaps, well then you're four hour job into a fucking 16 hour job. Get the pricks out, easy to pull the manifold off. <laughs> and then get them out on the bench. So yeah, do have enough spare parts, I just don't have the time. It really wants to go off the road for a little while and have some TLC. Not that it's not that it's unroadworthy. It's just uh, a bit of a perfectionist. Even though it looks like an old vehicle, it's probably better than some of the new stuff that comes out. Just because I look after it, you know. I say things are bad. They're bad by my description, but they'd they'd be fine for you know years and years and years for other people. It's just this thing I rely on so much and. You know, like it gets all that firewood. It gets worked hard when it does work other than driving to work daily. You know, like quite often you see this thing with firewood nearly on bump stops and trailer as well around the farm and yeah, bloody here's what it is. I should check that that moves too. That's your brake bias. So when you're loaded, it gives it more um, braking at the rear. Changes it from was it 65 40 or whatever 65 35 or something like that. Anyhow, 60 40, not sure. Um, change it closer to 50 50, depending on how much it moves, how well it's loaded, whatnot. So, yeah, I did change the oil in this diff a while ago, and it all came out pretty good. So, yeah. Everything's had a birthday. Just really needs another engine. <laughs> Just losing power. Or at least another carby for now. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. I've already like rambled for 12 minutes. Sprout, Brussels sprout, don't look too hard. It did look better than that, but I was trying to bridge across to the last world and I actually blew a few holes, so then I had to fill them in. Just to try and give it some strength. <laughs> And there goes the air compressor, so I used the ratchet strap to pull that around. Dare I have a look at this whilst I'm here? Yeah, why not? Good enough. Done. There's a little whisper somewhere. But then I noticed here was a little hole. This is point of impact. That's what actually caused it to get twisted and break tiny 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 little hole so I touched it with the wire wheel and then it blew out to something big so I fixed a few cracks up into here they don't look real pretty but all this will hopefully one day get deleted and put something new on so yeah I've even had it split up in here before this has all been welded up before and it's been welded up where the pipes join the collector up there the flange so that's done. Noise comes out the finally. So it hasn't obviously came out the back for a while. Well, has came out the back, but not has come out the back, but not not properly. Once the thermo fan shuts up. Back to being quiet. So I'll have to move everything now and happy days. Put this story to bed. Now the exhaust is nice and quiet. If it breaks again, I'll just have to weld it again, but maybe next time I should add a bit of strapping or something in between. But that's back the way it was now. You know? 
all the noise out the rear. Like it's supposed to be. There's a split back there too. Oh well, who cares? Who cares? 99.99999% comes out here. Did similar things to um, Tamara's Bluebird, I don't know, seven or eight years ago when we were living up at Auburn. Because the mechanic there put it up on the hoist and said, I can't weld that. He says, you have to go to an exhaust shop. So then we had to go find all the parts and get a slipper piece of tube where they flare both ends and you basically cut out what you need and slip it in. So rather than do that, I went and bought that shitty little red welder that I'm using now uh, for 200 bucks off of eBay. We waited for the week and only drove the car when we needed to to uh, get, a thing, get the thing in the post. And I climbed under there on my guts. I didn't have ramps, but I had a, a piece of land that was kind of, you know, because we were actually in a house that we were renting. And um, yes, I drove part of the car up onto an embankment and whatnot, and chopped the wheels and climbed underneath and stitched the thing up. And it survived living out with the in-laws for six months, plus they lived out Avon for like 12 months. And that road at 60 kilometers an hour feels like you're doing a Dakar rally at like 160 or, or quicker. Like the dash does all this at 60 k's an hour. It's actually better if you do like 100, 120. You glide over some of the bumps. That road was so fucked at the time that, um, yeah, it survived all that. And it was paper thin then too. And yeah, the guys reckon they'd never weld it. So I did. Got one, one pinprick of a hole in it, you can see some black stuff, and I'm like, who cares? <laughs> you know, like, it's not even bad to listen to. So, yeah. Righto, I'll stitch all these videos together tonight, hopefully. Get this thing out of here, and I'll put the 720 back in, I guess. I should, uh, should see if that starts on video, too. Oh, moment of truth, that battery was a bit... Sad, you see, one pump, a little bit of throttle. Oh, the battery swings it over. I think the vehicle that came out of probably wasn't charging. That second hand I got from somewhere else. The old L18. Kids and their toys. As I stand here and look at my toys, they A87 head. Kidney shape, closed combustion chamber. The heads that you find on your triple S's. So yeah, goodly, goodly, goodly. And then one day I'll have to do the rest of the exhaust up on this. I actually was contemplating putting the diesel in, but I don't have the right sum. But either way, one day it's going to come out and get the five speed. I did weld this exhaust many, many moons ago. This exhaust is actually off the diesel from the cab back because this one was trashed. And so yeah. Bloody uh, I kept it up nice and high, did a good job on it. It was not bad. You stick your hand over the end and nearly stall the engine out. I've got it all sealed. It clacks a bit at the front there where it bloody legs. Like at the manifold wherever it's cracked. But yeah, you can just about stall the engine out. Anyway, fuck it, let's do it. going to add this to the uh, other video because it's all for the same vehicle in a nutshell. Got to glue that end because that end jumps off and then you lose tension and then your choke won't come off because, well, your choke will come off. You won't high, your high idle won't come off because it won't return back to its stopper. So it'll be stuck behind this screw again. And whilst it's off, you can easily undo these three, pull this vacuum unit around, and get to, I'll just see in there. I think I can let this go now. It won't stick to itself. Just in there is a secondary's uh, Venturi grub screw. And the main one is down in here. I had no Loctite. I don't know where I've put it. So... What I've done is I've super glued them in because what started all the problem off was that the secondary come loose 
and then it just pours in raw fuel and you can go quarter throttle but you go over that and it just bogs in and just pours out copious amounts of black smoke so yeah this is yeah and then obviously check all the other screws on this carby put this on it should be the end of my problems this one's been dropped in post but anyway no harm no foul it returns to idle none of the you know all the butterflies shut properly so yeah um and the secondary is open nicely but they're vacuum operated apparently if you remove the spring in the top of the diaphragm here just leave it out because it will shut on its own um, in a nutshell it responds quicker but yeah, I don't think you need to when, it, when they're working properly I don't think you need to at all so yeah anyway put this back on there's a circuit that holds it. Make sure it returns to home and then, yeah, bloody put, it, put that spring back on as well. And I might put my idler up for the air conditioner in because this one does come with the bracket. So I might just chuck it in, in the pretense that, <laughs> pretense? Yeah, in the, in the hoping anyway that I actually do fix my high pressure line and regas my air conditioner. So, yeah. All right, I found my uh, found my tripod. Now, I hope I got this camera the right way. Yeah, I think I have. Yeah, bear with me. So I've just put this back together. <clears throat> For those that don't know, when you start your Datsun in the morning, or whatever carby this is on, whatever this carby is on, I should say, you give it full throttle, one full pump, and it brings you into high idle there. You see this is stuck on, on here. And then, see it just went over a click, just come back. As the element heats up, it opens and it applies tension on that spring. This is where you get the trouble. The spring slips. When you take it off a choke, see you come down in stages. Just pretend it's still high idling and it's still partially under choke. Okay, we've got chokes off and it comes back to idle the big thing is that this thing returns the sender it sits back here returns home and the other thing you got to watch out for is just that corner there sometimes these are manufactured especially being Chinese manufactured a bit dodgily and when your choke is fully off it just touches but it should be off well and truly but sometimes you gotta adjust your carby here it's got rich and, rich and lean written on it and I reckon it's in the wrong spot for my ute actually to be quite honest anyway doesn't matter you can get to that with a small grub screw and you just well you really gotta get to these two and sometimes you just back that one off a little bit Sometimes you won't need to and you'll be able to adjust it to, to tell it how much choke you want on. By the looks of this one, I'd say it's set fairly rich. So it might even hunt on a cold morning. But, um, yeah, I might roughly put it in the middle. I've got a fair guesstimation, fairly good guesstimation as to where it should go. So, yeah, and make sure that it clears this one here up. No, oh, you can't see for that. Make sure it clears that stopper there. I'm still not happy with this one. See, it's not returned. You know, like, there's not a lot of spring tension. And it doesn't take a lot to foul it up, you know. See, it flicked back that time. If I go and turn it... See, it's hooking up on something. That spring on the back is such a chaotic little spring. Yeah, you'd think the engine vibrations would keep it off. See, look, it's stuck again, halfway. Hasn't, there you go, it's come back again. Piss that off out of the way. Now, see, it's jammed. Pain in the ass. 
things just aren't built the way they used to be. But anyway, I'll run it like that. If it gives me too much problem, well, there's not much I can do about it other than put more tension on that spring. As that, and it's actually really hard to achieve to get that to do another turn and then hook back into here. Um, because this spring goes in the bind, like it's wrap, wrapped up on the back here and it's it's not very good to look at, if you know what I mean. Let's see if I can zoom you in. You can see already, it's kind of bound up a bit. Oh, where are we? There. Yeah, by the time you pull it around, that's why you got to be careful when you glue that other side on. And usually that other side comes off and unspins and then this just free floats and then, you know, like, you won't get idle, not because anything else is wrong, but because this is just floating around, getting jammed up. Bit of a pain. Manual choke, I think, is far easier, but, you know, it is what it is. Out for now. Yeah, so I got my idler up on. Do not like it at all because obviously it's got to be pushed up with, you know, when it's in idle. And then when it goes for to idle the air and out, idle it up due to the air conditioner, it pushes it out. So consequently, there's weight on here and you need an extra spring, and then that creates wear through there. And uh, so it's just a headache. You know, like the Series 2 Bluebird had. A linkage with a bend in it and the idler up just sat underneath the well actually series one two and three bluebirds oh, three was different series one and two you know had a linkage that sat there like that and uh, the second that it wanted to idle it up it worked on the back of the linkage you know like it was independent this you know like you, you're relying on all the springs to push it shut again you know, like, just dumb. Just dumb. I don't want nothing to idle up near a thousand revs. It's stupid. I've even spaced it. I cut a washer and put a shim in there and shimmed it further back because you can always wind it further down. So, yeah, you can always wind that. And that dictates how far down or how many revs it, it gives the uh, engine under load. Because don't forget, your air conditioner on average is about 3 horsepower. So, yeah, and I've wound that all the way in. That's another way of adjusting it. The other option would be to take that out completely and run it dead square on that shaft. But, yeah, that's 19 mil, and once you get that on, get this on the car, it's hard to get to that. So, if you want to take that shim out, which I made just then, so hopefully I've got enough adjustment. I think I will.